But this next one, yeah, unfortunately, is not is not a joke. All right, Geico has to pay five point two million dollars to a woman who got HPV from having sex in a man's insured car. I hope they they uh, they fix this on appeal because that is absolutely stupid. Yeah, what were we saying earlier about women really just being mad about being held to task as adults and taking responsibility yeah. for what they do with their wax works down below? Well, obviously she went, she had unprotected uh, shagnanigans in the car yeah. with her then boyfriend and in his insured automobile. So, how the hell? Is his insurance company liable for him I've, cheating on her? I have no idea. I mean, because if, if they're, you know, unprotected sex with her then boyfriend, mm -hmm. and he didn't have HPV before, obviously he picked it up somewhere. You know, dick move, but it is what it is. Well, they're they're and paying it go. to a woman. Yeah, who got the HP? The, uh, she got HPV because she had a high penis vagina. Yep, they got it got sick. <laughs> Terrible, and now she's she's gonna get five point two million dollars. You know what's crazy? That you said you hope ridiculous. they appeal it. The court of appeals for the Western District of Missouri, uh huh. They affirmed the payout against the insurance company, so wow. this was the appeal. Now get ready to have your uh, everyone's insurance uh, rates go up astronomically because if you're gonna get paid for all the shit that happens, that is not you know. Relevant wow. to the car. That's insane. $5.2 million for what? She got some, you know, cauliflower <laughs> spots in her vagina. <laughs> you know, there's a real easy way to avoid that. Wrap your tool. Or limit the amount of a pogo stick jumping you're doing. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, maybe you should keep that to a bare yeah. minimum. Instead of only insisting on a sex strike when you can't murder the infant growing inside you, how about you exercise a little impulse control and selectivity when yeah. you're going around? Because it's only your health at stake. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let's just jump from one salami to the next. It'll be fine. Yeah, and, and what could go wrong? And we're coming to a time when a lot of that shit is not curable with antibiotics anymore. Yeah. The, the so kind of syphilitis. It could uh, really wind up being fatal. Yeah. And there are women out there who are going to swear on a stack of Bibles that that's only a small percentage of women. Get the hell out of here. Well, one in ten moms isn't sure who fathered their baby. Now, we did a video on this about, was it three or four years back, where we actually mm. uh, showed a stat from one of the what, blood banks or, or was it was the, the American Associ American Association of Blood Banks, yes. the ABB, and they used to do uh, testing. Yep, to see you know who the father was, and one third of all the tests they conducted, the guy was not the father. Yep. All right. Thirty three percent. Okay, and, and that is at the level where people are actually contesting. Yep. The, the child. There this, are a lot of dudes out there who never contest it. Yeah. This this is one in ten. I mean, yep. that is egregious. One in ten. I mean, we have, what, 330 million people in the United States, so yeah. that means there's yeah. and this 33 is, or 10 percent is, what, yeah. 33 million? Well, this is, this is the U.K., uh -huh. but across the Western world, these numbers are going to be fairly consistent. Correct. There might be some wiggle room on either side, but, I mean— Shows like Maury Povich were on the air for 30 years for a reason. Now, l let's be honest. Do we really think it's going to be any better here in America? It's probably going to be worse. It's going to be way worse. <laughs> way worse. Much worse. And that's, that's why we need to have the yeah. mandatory DNA test as soon as the child comes into the world so we can nip this in the bud because guess what? If you find out the kid's not yours and she was able to trick you for two years, in most states you still got to pay child support. That's effectively turning you into a fucking slave. Yep. Here we got a, a case right here. Man ordered to pay 65000 in child support for a child who isn't his. It was embattled in court in Texas. It was proven by DNA, and they said, well, she's older than two years. Too bad, so sad. You're still the father. 
Well, well, as far as monetary, you know, well, that's support on the hook. Well, listen, um, some of these men moving forward are probably going to have to make a decision to either die on their feet or or be a slave on their knees. Yep, because that's exactly what these men are being turned into. Yeah, and uh, it's fucked up. Uh, an Australian documentary series called Who's Your Daddy? That's ironic. Re- uh, released in 2014, references reports that up to 30% of paternities are misattributed. So it's not just the American Association of Blood Banks. Like I said, across the entire Western world, you're going to see very similar trajectories and behavior. Uh, and listen, dudes, here in America, where you can get a DNA test, you can buy the kit, uh, you literally. When it's your day to watch the kid when she needs to get some sleep or something, you go buy the DNA test, swab the baby's cheek, swab yours, send it in, and get some uh, mental clarity that the child is definitely yours. Yeah. If not, take appropriate steps and get the fuck out of there. And bottom line, dudes, wrap your tool not just to protect you from pregnancy but due to the fact that stis are at an all time high yeah because of these nasty snot pockets going around without any consequences for their actions well that and you got tinder yep and you have like a lot of the five six and seven you know women Mm -hmm. out of one through ten the approachable ones yeah. The, well, the people think like the super hot chicks are the ones who get all the dick they want. They're not. It's the five, sixes, and sevens because they look more approachable. Well, I know, but there are some women that are really high up there that are mm. complete snorkel. Well, oh, I'm not hogs. saying yeah. I'm not saying that, you know, you don't, you know, hot dog down a hallway, those those ladies, because they can oh, they I've... can they can just have their pick of those top tier men, whereas oh. top tier men will slump buster with a five six or seven whereas a to- a top 10 woman will never slump buster with a dude who's a five six or seven. Oh no that's never gonna happen yeah but like some of those women that i threw out of the barracks were very attractive yeah. and they were nothing but snorkel hogs <laughs> spunk buckets that's exactly Grant right Rennie. <laughs> like they're, by the time they left in the morning their hair was moose back like they were doing 100 miles an hour it was it's like <laughs> Like something about Mary. Oh, my. It was worse. I was like, oh, my God. Uh, How'd you get the beans above the frank? Oh, God. (laughs) No, and like, like, and I I just tell the stories about the the ones uh, I found and broke up. Mm -hmm. But there were other ones that were taking place in the barracks that I heard about that were were not, there was no intervention and shit was way out of control. Yeah. I had like almost the entire platoon in my company had VD. Oh, from wow. one chick. From one chick? Yeah. Wow. That's nuts. Yeah. And they they, they got fucked up. They, Dude's they, passing they, around a chick and they're raw dogging it? Yeah. You got to be kidding me. No. and th- I, I was like f- was like 13 of them. Uh, one, one or two E5s. The wow. rest were lower enlisted. They all got a company grade article 15. Oh. Wow, and it, I I read one of the Article 15s, and and quite frankly, the, the first sergeant was a genius. He just like <laughs> you know, in the description, you're receiving this Article 15 for having unprotected sex. Quote, dumbass. Unquote. <laughs> <laughs> You've had to miss training time and blah 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 blah. If this happens again, the punishment will be much harsher. Oh yeah, they, they didn't know. lose any rank or yeah. money, but they got the company grade, and they were they were. Extra duty for a month and extra duty in the range battalion was yes. sadistic. Holy shit. Oh, my God. Those guys, are they don't fuck around. You fuck oh, up, man. you know it. I, I mean, being Eskimo brothers with people you know is nasty enough, let alone, like, watching the Ancestry.com spew out in front of you and all of these tributaries of bazooka juice. Oh, it was terrible. All at the same time. Because like, I, I remember that Monday when they're all going on sick call, the first sergeant made them hold hands and skip out the door. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just like, I remember I'm, I'm, holding, a, I'm, ho- I'm holding a Coke, and I'm like, oh, that is so fucked up. <laughs> 
I'm singing in the rain. No, because he's just like, <laughs> all right, you guys, what? You guys touching penises? Everyone got VD? I was like, hold his hand. <laughs> Skip out the door. Don't cross the stream. I was like, oh, my God. That would be bad. I, you, like, if that was to happen today, people would get really upset. <laughs> But it was comedy gold. <laughs> and, like, I remember Bubby, the medic, he's just watching the whole thing like, uh, well, <laughs> uh, if they wanted condoms, they got a whole bag of them. They didn't ask, not one of them asked me for anything, so fuck them. Oh, and, and never, ever, ever trust these women when they tell you they're on the pill. Because they always insist they're on the pill. And we did a whole episode about uh, unwanted pregnancies. A woman was trying to blame men for every single one of them. And we debunked it flat out. Like, over half of women have admitted to seduction tactics for trying to talk the dude out of wearing the condom. Uh, I, I think it's almost two-thirds of women at some point in their life have lied about being on the pill. And if you knock her up. You're on the hook. And she lies about being on the pill, it doesn't matter. You cannot sue her. You are still fucked. You're stuck. Even though she d technically defrauded you. Yeah, and they're going after uh, sperm donors, too. Yeah. So just to reiterate, if you're a dude and you tell her that you're a day trader making ten grand a day to get her in the sack and she finds out that you lied, she can accuse you of rapé. But she can lie about being on the pill, get you to slip one by the goalie, and you're on the hook for 18 to 21 years, and if you don't like it, well, you should have kept it in your pants. That's exactly correct. Why that, is it stunning and brave to force a man to become a parent, but it's evil, misogynistic, and wrong to tell a woman, hey, if you're the gatekeeper of sex, be more choosy? Because, you know, we have all the reproductive rights. Yeah. Except, uh, well, by all, if you mean zero, then that's absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because... That's exactly what happens. And even if she sperm jacks you, this is why we always tell you, either take the condom with you or flush it down the toilet. Woman has twins with ex-boyfriends stolen sperm. Courts rule X to pay child support. Yep. Whoo. Now uh, listen. Yeah. Now, now listen. Mm. All right. That's fucked up. A but at bit. the end of the day, the kid is still, you know, DNA tested to be that the product of that dude. Yeah. So there is a chance for him to salvage something out of the whole deal, a relationship with his kids. Yeah. Now, if, like we said before, if, if she allows it, if you are not the DNA guy and they, they, they fool you and you have to pay child support for a kid that's not yours, you're going to have to, it, these men are going to have to start handling business because if you can't get justice in the courts. It, you're going to you know, get justice somewhere else. Yeah, historically speaking, it happens outside the courts. And if it, and this is going to get worse and worse. And it's yeah. gonna, it's going to get to that point where uh, dudes are going to say, fuck this. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I'm going to live in the street and be homeless my whole life. For, and uh -uh. I just live off the grid and you can say and you can fuck off yeah. because I can either I can either work three jobs to pay the child support, never get to see the kid. You call me a deadbeat dad. Yeah. Or I can live off the grid, actually have some freedom to myself, still not get to see the kid. And you call me a deadbeat dad. The same thing. Either way, that's why the, the deadbeat dad dilemma, I think, is one of the best pieces of logical reasoning you've ever put down. Really? Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> oh, because I, I remember watching that, you know, while we were filming. I'm like, fuck, he's right. You know, you, you grow up hearing about all these stigmas as a kid. Uh-huh. And because you hear them all the time, you just take them for granted. Like, well, yeah, there's there's some garbage men out there. But you know what else? There's some garbage fucking females out there. And there's a whole lot of women who relied on Roe v. Wade because they're accidental pregnancies, which really means unsuccessful baby trapping. Yeah, or laziness. It backfired. Yeah. Yep. And guess what? Now, like, no, there's going to be just a smidgen of accountability here. Mm -hmm. Just a smidgen, and not even in every state. The states that these people are riding in, they're going to have it legal up to 28 days after birth. Yeah, and that's just, that's murder, and it's yeah. evil. It's straight up evil. But you're also going to have some hoes who are going to be like, hmm, 
I can be devious as shit now because I'm 28, and it's about time I roped a good dude in to settle down. Oh, and yeah. obviously, if I lie about being on the pill, he can't sue me or get out of his obligations to the child, so I can skate on easy street with child support for the next 18 to 21 and years. And if the kid's uh, you know, defective, you can, you can pay child support for the rest of the kid's life. Yep. <sighs> and you know what we call that, right? <laughs> right. Uh, Baby rabies. It's even in the Urban Dictionary. Uh-huh. A condition wherein the biological drive to have a baby morphs into a neurotic obsession to have a baby by any means necessary. You, you ever uh-huh. met any women like this, dudes? Usually it sets in right around 26 to 34. And, you know, I'm curious, too, about the story of the 1 in 10. How many people out there found out that your dad wasn't your dad? Ooh. Or... Doesn't even, you know, your mom was such a whore, she doesn't even know who your dad is. I have a couple friends that uh, don't know who their dad was. Oh, God. Because their mother was a fucking cum guzzling, uh, <laughs> you know. And that was back cushion. in, I mean, th- th- just think, that was still happening when you were a kid. Yeah, that was in the 70s. And now, it's so much worse. Oh, yeah. Well, now, there's no stigma anymore. Back in the day, people still did that kind of stuff. But uh, they really... They didn't air it out on social media. They didn't talk about it. It wasn't like a... Hashtag shout your body count. Hashtag shout your abortion. Yeah. That's just nuts. On your chin. Oh, God. (laughs) Or if you keep banging a bunch of these chicks with HPV, it's nuts dropping off and, you know, shriveling up and rolling away. Wait, come back. And they're saying here it usually affects women in their late 30s to early 40s. I'm going to say it goes from 26... To mainly 34, 35. Yeah. And then then it tapers off. And a lot of these women who don't have any kids, when they get around 40, they really implode. I have seen some women have like two and three year depression uh, bouts from 40 to 43. Wow. Because they they never had kids. They're not married. It's done. It's over. Well... (laughs) And, yeah. I, and I got that saying, 40 to 80 is a long time, mm-hmm. from one of those women. It's true. Uh, there was a tweet. I, I never managed to actually grab it. But there was somebody, there's some whamming on Twatter talking about how she was so excited that her divorce was finalizing. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm so elated for this next chapter. Oh, and yeah. this woman who was in like her 40s or 50s said, you know, you might want to let me know when that next chapter comes because I felt exactly the same way you did. Getting divorced was the biggest mistake I have ever made because that next chapter never came and now I'm miserable and alone and my kids are all gone and no one gives a fuck about me. Yep. Straight from the horse's mouth. That's absolutely correct. Watch Grunt Speak Live every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And if you'd like to join Pop for Supporter Sundays, consider making a donation on Locals, Patreon, or Subscribestar.